This episode is a doozy. Is porn. You heard me right. Is porn helping or hurting your business performance? Flow chat fam, sales centers, hey, thank you for tuning into the Spotlight series. This week is by far the most shocking. I don't know where this is going to go, how this is going to end up, but I, I know this. I know the human, the fellow Flow chat fam member that is coming to us today is just like us, a fellow entrepreneur, business owner, and is a is the way he shows up in life is insanely powerful. He's insanely valuable. I know this is going to be time well spent. And I, listen, my, my curiosity, my curiosity is like just always performance driven. I want to go fast. I want to learn. I want to do better, do more. I want to increase and strengthen my my marriage and my relationships and my partnerships and also the result in revenue in my business. And I think this is a really, this is a hard topic. It's a vulnerable topic, but I think this is a real topic to be vulnerable about and have a powerful conversation around. And there's no one better than Sathya to have that with. Sathya, thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, man. We know where we're going with this conversation, <laughs> right? But I, I yeah. really want people, be- before we get right into it, I really want people to kind of get to feel and meet you. So I've got to meet you. We met at you know events. We've been talking back and forth over Voxer. So I know where you're coming from. I know the value you're about to bring. I want other people to start getting that sense. So for, for you, this is obviously a very edgy, vulnerable topic. How did you, be, you know, why are you the expert to listen to in this topic? Yeah. So I mean, um, this isn't the kind of work that I necessarily dreamed about growing up as a kid. Uh, personally, I had bigger ambitions of being a pizza boy. Um, but, uh, but, you know, life has a funny way of leading us in different places. Um, the, the honest truth is that I had a struggle with pornography myself. I uh, grew up in a very churched home. My my dad was a pastor. We got private education and it was in the computer lab of my Christian school where I first got exposed. I was 11 years old. This is before internet was even mainstream, before smartphones. So it was a different world back then, but in some ways it was the same old problem. But um, that eventually spiraled into an addiction where Uh, I would plan my days around when I was going to watch porn. I couldn't go a day without it. And I, you know, I've always been a high performer. My initial endeavor was to get into med school and become a psychiatrist. So when I was in university, you know, I was working super hard. I was getting great grades, volunteering. Uh, I got five figures of research grants. So, you know, working in the university labs and all of it like would culminate with me watching porn. That's how I took the edge off at the end of a busy day. Uh, It was sort of my relief and also my reward. Any any of your listeners who have pursued an education know that you do not get uh, rewarded financially for doing that. Um, So for me, that was kind of my way of getting um, some more immediate gratification. And um, I always told myself I could stop like I knew I knew it probably wasn't great for me. I I certainly had a moral conviction just growing up in a a religious home. But I always thought uh, one day when I take my life a bit more seriously, I'll get rid of it. That day came and I could not get rid of it. And I think that's when I realized I had a problem um, and I needed some help. And there was not a lot of people talking about it. So I kind of identified uh, the market gap, if you will, and realized that um, if I could get free and figure it out, then I could probably help a lot of of other guys as well. And so that's taken a a journey. That was probably about 10 years, uh, five years to actually get free in the last five years, building out kind of my programs and my works and everything now. Um, but now I run a business called Deep Clean and this is what I do full time. I help guys get free of porn addiction. Wow, man. And, and anyone listening, watching this, the intent of today's conversation is to have a real open, vulnerable conversation. There's there's no guilt. There's no shame, you know, associated with the conversation. And there's a couple different, you know, angles that, that we'll talk about. One, there's just the real honest journey that Sathya is being open and, and honest with. And then, then there's this element of how does this affect life and business performance? performance. Um, addiction is a real thing. If it's porn addiction or any other type of addiction, uh, this, I, you know, personally, I have fam, family members that I've seen different addictions take place and it has destroyed their life. And so I know today's conversation is, you know, per- personal. I, I was addicted to porn myself uh, at one, if I'm, you know, putting some of my story out there uh, today, you know, at one point in life, that was over 16 years ago, but I can only imagine, like, I remember what it was like to be free of that. And that would have drastically changed the, the dynamic of my marriage and the relationships that I have and and how I, you know, raise kids and and so zero guilt and shame today this is a safe place to have a conversation but i think it's i think it's I, i'm i'm not afraid to just put stuff out in the open and i appreciate you Cynthia, because i know you're the same way and so this is uh for for others to um you know, hear some best practices to break free of really probably any addiction but yeah. you know we have kind of this personal story that you're willing to share around porn so this all being said Cynthia, that's your personal story you you started helping other you know men specifically with with the addiction T- let's talk about the pain of it where does this start to creep in or sneak because it's oh it's sneaky you know what i mean it's like it, it it's hurting 
uh, most people more than they realize. You didn't real. yeah, I, I could stop. You're telling yourself you can stop. Where does it, when do you really start to know how much it's really hurting? Yeah, so I've worked with um, a lot of high-performing people, uh, worked with professional athletes, executives, and certainly entrepreneurs. Uh, for people who are branded that way, typically the pain points are relationships. So usually people are coming to me because um, sometimes it's single guys or guys who are engaged, they want to get married, and you know their significant other has found out that they're watching porn and is like, what? Like, I'm not ready to really get married to you if that's in, if that's in the mix. And um, unfortunately, what we see often is married men who, you know, they build their businesses, success in other areas. Um, they're performing well in their respective sport or they're, you know, high achieving doctors or whatever. Um, but then at home, to cope with, you know, the stresses and the pressures of life. Uh, they've resorted to pornography, they've been caught, and and usually the significant other is is upset about it, they feel betrayed, and it's, it's starting to wreak mm -hmm. havoc on their lives. And I think if you go further along in life, um, then you have the risk of catching your own kids watching porn, passing down those habits to them, and seeing kind of the destruction it has on your children as they're developing. And that can often be, um, I would say, a source of pain as well. But the, the relational realm is, is probably the part we need to talk about the most, because um, I think when you're innocently coming into pornography, you don't necessarily think much of it. You never imagine it could wreak havoc on your relationships and your performance at work and everything else. But it, it really does if it gets its hooks deep enough. Hooks deep enough. It's like so it's it's almost like it's not bad or it's not wrong or like in moderation at first. But then there's this point of where it goes too far. Is that how you would articulate it? Yes and no. I think on as far as like having a major impact on somebody's life, um, yeah, when the hooks go deep and it's obvious, we can all call it a problem. I think the 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 issue with sort of the casual watching of pornography is that um, pornography is very intertwined with sex trafficking, human trafficking, and it's quite ironic because you have a lot of people who actually support anti-human trafficking endeavors, but they watch pornography not realizing that all the clicks and everything that they're kind of fueling in their porn consumption is actually funding the very thing that they are trying to kind of go against. So there's, there's a whole other dynamic to even like whether or not you're a casual viewer. And casual viewership has shown to decrease relationship satisfaction. It's reduced self-esteem. Um, generally, there's a, there's a much less sense of purpose and hope in life, uh, even from casual watching. But all of that is amplified when you're watching it more regularly. So let's talk about best. Let, let's talk about the addiction. Let's go to the addiction piece, and and this will be valuable for people that maybe are are currently watching this and struggling with porn addictions, or maybe on the verge of kind of, or they go back and forth in their mind from time to time, and and maybe it's just yeah. uh, you know addiction to other things. Let's talk about best practices of breaking addiction. Where do we start? Okay, the the basis of all addiction, whether it's alcohol, gambling, drugs, porn, video games, you know, whatever. The basis of all addiction is anticipatory expectation. So in other words, mm. it's, it, you're not generally addicted to the substance or the behavior. You're actually addicted to what's next. And as an entrepreneur, that's all we think about. All we think about is what's next. The next step of the business, uh, the next division we're going to start, the next hire. Um, we're, in that kind of environment, what's next is actually a really healthy thing. But if we don't give ourselves the opportunity to just be present and to stay in the moment, that, that kind of thinking can spiral out of control. Uh, you know, I think back to when I was addicted to porn, I would go to those, um, you know, those websites where you had a whole plethora of different genres and whatever. And I would, I would open like 20 videos in a new tab and you'd watch one and then you go to the next, right? It's, it's that what's next. That's what keeps somebody mm. addicted. And mm. one of the best things you can do as an entrepreneur is carve out places in your life on a consistent basis where you are just present, where you don't have to think about what's next. You don't have to worry about the future or whatever, but you can just be in the moment and really enjoy it. I think that's a huge part of it and, and twofold. And, and this is really important for people who are at the top because uh, one of my mentors said, uh, making it to the top is great, but it is a lonely place. Mm -hmm. and, um, and loneliness often will drive people to things like, uh, sexual misbehavior, whether it's pornography or strip clubs or, um, or worse, you know, because uh, we need that connection, you know, and if we're not getting meaningful connection with our peers, uh, you and I are part of a mastermind where we get to connect with other entrepreneurs. That's super essential for us, you know, to have those places where we can connect and build meaningful relationships. Those things go a long way to keeping our hearts satiated and preventing us from maybe wandering down the path of pornography. 
that that makes complete sense. And it's it's funny that the phrase that you're using, like the what's next. It's the ex, uh, expected anticipation, you know. Um, and as you're saying that, I was like, shoot! Like as an entrepreneur, <laughs> I was like, man, I'm like, okay, yeah. you know, we gotta hit the next goal. I'm like, and there's always like that that drive. So I think there's so much power in in being present. You know, I I've heard it said before. Hey. Uh, you can't do anything about the past. You're not there anymore. You can't do anything about the future because you're not there yet, but you can do something mm. in the present. And, uh, you know, with, you know, I've got screens all around <laughs> and all these different distractions and different, you know, being present is, actually becomes uh, a, a really good skill, something to practice. So what are some, wh- how do, what do you recommend? Like how, what are some best practices of being present? Yeah, I mean, um, breathing is actually a huge thing. That's something I've been really focused on lately because um, I'm releasing a book in a couple of months and I found Congrats. myself just in sort of like, thanks, man. Um, but I've, mentally, I've really found myself very distracted and just jumping from one thing to the next. Uh, breathing is really good. Another thing we encourage guys, especially when they're going through our recovery program, is uh, the power of your environment. So when you find yourself tempted and you're kind of jonesing a little bit for that next hit, uh, we, we tell guys to stand up get out of the room and take a deep breath. Uh, those are really practical things that you can do. You don't have to talk to anybody. You don't have to put yourself out there. Uh, you can do that in your own space. But when you're really serious about getting free long-term, you do want to bring other people into the picture as well. Uh, people that you trust mm-hmm. granted. Um, and ideally you're looking for a solution that involves community. Uh, the number of people that have come to me and after their first you know, group coaching call with us, or they start plugging in on the online forums and they're like, honestly, I had no idea there are other people struggling like this and the transparency becomes really refreshing, but also it becomes really liberating just to let people know I'm not the only one. There's other you know, business owners out there struggling. There's other fathers or husbands out there struggling. All of those things go a really long way to de-shaming. And once you start to get some of the wheels in motion that way, the actual solutions to recovery become a lot easier to execute. Makes sense. It's something you said something really powerful community. The, like the greatest yeah. temptation and lie and, and really any like hero's journey and any aspect of life is that you're alone and mm. you're not, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. you know, the, the ideas, thoughts, feelings, experiences, they may be meaningful and unique to us, but we're not alone in them. They're, they're relatable. You could, yeah. you could put us in a room with a hundred other people from anywhere in the world and you start communicating some feelings, 80 to 90% of the room will say, I, I can relate to that. It's an, I've seen, I've, yes. I'm not just making that up. Like I actually experienced that from other, it was 200 people in the room multiple times, people all over the world. And there's different experiences that people were being vulnerable and sharing. And it was like, dude, there we are. The fact we're alone is the dumbest most untrue lie that flies through my head still but i remind myself of those experiences and i appreciate you sharing because that community piece man hopefully ah, everyone hears it and they get they're able to plug into community that being said where are some helpful uh, communities i know you've worked on some and built some yeah yeah we i mean we built one uh community is like the central component of what we do when i first started helping guys in this area i did a lot of one-on-one coaching which I still do for like our high income earners and, and top performers, but our, all of our solutions, even that always includes a group component. Um, so we have that, but then there's, uh, there's a, the NoFap community, which is like a completely free forum, a great place for you to anonymously ask questions you have. And that is the one thing we find in this area of sexuality. It's a very difficult subject to just bring up. Um, it's not the same as talking about uh, physical health, you know, or, uh, or relationships there's a certain shame component to it. So anywhere you can find where you feel safe uh, is going to go a long way. Highly recommend it. Um, and if you're looking for something a little more faith-based, uh, low barrier to entry, there is a community called Live Free. Uh, it's livefree.app. They're fantastic as well. They have a great community. And uh, we've referred a lot of guys there as well who maybe uh, aren't able to work with us mm-hmm. but are looking for a broader community. That's awesome, man. Well, hey, I, I appreciate you uh, being willing to, to share your story, uh, talk through addiction and talk through community and talk through some of these, uh, topics, um, that are vulnerable and, and, you know, there's, there's a lot of past experience and history, any type of addiction. Um, what would you say for, to business owners, to entrepreneurs, high performers is, is porn good? Is it bad? It's a very complicated question to answer for sure. Um, 
I, I want uh, the people to know that I'm going to answer this apart from my own moral convictions because I think that's the best way I can give you an objective answer. I think porn impacts sort of three different arenas. Um, one is the consumer. Uh, one is uh, the people on the other side of the screen, the actors and the performers. And then, as I mentioned, there's, there's a whole trafficking industry that is kind of intertwined to this. Um, I think anything that fosters human trafficking, sex trafficking, we can all agree that that's a bad endeavor. It's not something we should support. And, um, and porn is, is associated with that. It's actually impossible. Uh, there's this terminology swirling around now called ethical porn. The idea that, you know, the porn you're watching uh, was done under, you know, full consent and there was no uh, misjudgments or, 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 I guess, deception about how people got involved, which is often the case. Um, but ethical porn is a little bit of an oxymoron because it's actually impossible to prove that what's taking place is actually ethical in nature. Uh, a couple of my colleagues uh, were some of the top ranked adult film stars. Uh, the one guy has over a thousand adult film credits. And he said that what they typically do a in thousand? the industry is- That's a lot of videos. A thousand. <laughs> yeah, he won, I mean, and he, it wasn't a matter of six or seven years. Like the guy was like pumping it out uh, for lack of a better term. And he, um, <laughs> he yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, he, he said that like you would basically sign a contract and um, it takes anywhere from four to eight hours to produce a 20 minute video. So just think about the, the sort of ungodly conditions a guy has to be in physically to be able to kind of just perform on a dime. So he, he has injections going into his body, everything else to stay, you know, in the appropriate condition. And uh, what happens is you don't get your paycheck until the video finishes. So if you're if your equipment isn't performing well, so to speak, uh, then too bad. Like the 20 people on set are going to stay. They're going to wait until you have your moment and they need to capture that scene and then you get your check. So these are the kinds of conditions that you're actually Dang. endorsing when you engage with pornography. Um, consent is another big thing. Uh, I, won't, I won't get too far into that, but consent is really hard to prove these days. The people that are even acting on the screen, a lot of underage performers, uh, a lot of that going on. And then um, th there's tons of research that shows watching porn, as I mentioned casually, it affects your, uh, your brain's performance, your brain health, uh, it affects your relationships, your relational well-being, and that, that can either be with your staff and employees or within your relationships at home. But as we know, like how things go at home often dictates how things go at work. Like those things are very connected. And the one thing that I witness really frequently is that actually people struggle with porn, but they, when they know they don't want it in their life and they want to get rid of it, it really affects their spirituality. And I, again, I don't mean like whatever your moral conviction is fine. But when I say spirituality, I mean your sense of purpose, you know, that you actually are on the planet for a good reason. And the studies show that, that porn consumption reduces your self-esteem it reduces your motivation so um so i i can't really think of any condition where porn is good some people make the argument that you know you can spice up um, your sex life a little bit by watching some porn together and the studies do actually show that initially you do get a, a burst in relationship satisfaction when you introduce porn the long-term consequences consequences though are way worse um mm. divorce rates infidelity all those kinds of things skyrocket when porn sticks around in a relationship. So um, I, think, I think generally speaking, porn is not good. I, I have yet to really encounter uh, a set of conditions, either from an academic standpoint, anecdotally, or any other way, where it's actually beneficial to the individual. So I'm, um, I'm pretty strongly against it. I, I appreciate the, the breakdown and, and like the, the objective you know, uh, approach you know, or intel intelligent ap approach around it. Um, and it, oh, oh, I'm, I know this will be valuable, for, you know, for, for others to hear. So Sathya, I appreciate you, uh, breaking it down and, uh, <laughs> having the convo. Um, I always like to end with, with this, um, any athlete, any musician, any entrepreneur, any person that's like putting themselves out there to create, to contribute, uh, you know, to the world in their own way. It's a really vulnerable, scary, uh, place. It, it like, it's a, it's the hero's journey. It really is. And so what I'm fascinated by is why people do that. Um, I, I think I selfishly ask because it's like I totally resonate with all that and I keep putting myself out there and it's like scary and uncomfortable. And a lot of days I'm like, why am I doing this? <laughs> and so um, and I have my own whys. But today the question is, Cynthia, what is your why? What drives you? You know what? It's just seeing how many people's dreams are going unfulfilled.
or partially fulfilled because of the challenges that porn and sexual misbehavior introduce. If it was, um, if it was some, if it was alcohol, I'd be going after alcohol addiction. You know, like I'm so passionate about seeing people reach their potential and really fulfill their dreams, and porn stops people from doing that. So uh, that's kind of my mission, and that's why I do what I do. Appreciate answering, Cynthia. Hey, fellow Flowchat fam and uh, Sales Ascender, we are going to be back for another episode of Spotlight. Every single week, we're finding real people. They are getting real results because that's what we need. Uh, you watching, like life is short. Life is a gift. Being an entrepreneur is often lonely. Being at the top, as Cynthia mentioned, can be lonely, uh, but it doesn't have to be. The Spotlight is the place to connect with other crazy, you know, future thinking, uh, action taking people like yourself. And hey, appreciate you spending your time with us and excited to see you next time. Thanks, Cynthia. Thank you.